the network. I thought was interesting about playlisting in general was that um, user generated playlists outnumber the amount of official playlists on Spotify. Like they have a very, um, they're what, one of the, maybe the only streaming platform with that heavy of a user generated playlist community. Cause I don't think Apple doesn't really have a, u- a huge user generated playlist. I know these are, the rest of them really don't. And I know Rucker, you, you wrote an article talking about um, just breaking down, um, breaking down some of the more popular independent curators on Spotify. Uh, so can you speak to one, um, I guess being able as an artist to utilize these different indie curators before trying to jump to some of these major playlists and then one, what have been some of the best ways that you've seen to kind of like find these, these actual like really powerful independent curators, the ones who are actually competing. Cause I've seen like some of them actually compete with the major Spotify playlists or they get more listens right. than some of the major Spotify playlists. Yeah. So what I really wanted to do with that article is like sh- sort of break down sort of tiers of of these playlists and curators and have people like go explore themselves. What a lot of people don't realize is, so we have a filter where you can exclude um, Spotify or major label brands. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people don't realize that outside of Spotify editorials, which are obviously huge because they're Spotify, there's um, three major label um, curators as well. and those are uh, Filter, Digster, and Topsify. So those are all owned by major labels. So they're not really independent curators. So it's important to know that, first of all, because mm. if you're pitching to them, you know, probably not the best avenue to go down. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we have a filter where you can exclude, you know, Spotify and major label brands. And you can look at, you know, the truly like independent curators and, um, see how many playlist followers they have, um, 28 day change ratio Mm -hmm. uh, or percentage change in those followers. Um, So you can really filter what tier of independent playlist is right for you. Because just because it's independent doesn't necessarily mean it's the right one to go for. Because if it's huge, you're still not going to get through if you're just starting out, you know? so it's really up to you to, to again, it goes back to setting your goals and knowing where you're at in relation to your goal. Um, it's up to you to, to do that sort of self filtering and be re- realistic about like, Hey, I can target this smaller playlist and that might lead me to this bigger playlist. And we, ha- we actually have a feature called playlist journeys where you can see, um, the essentially the 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 journeys that tracks take through playlists so you can sort of see what playlists feed into what other playlists um so what smaller playlist the song started on to get it to a bigger and bigger playlist Uh, but it is really on on you to interpret or your team to interpret to interpret that for you for your goals it's not just going to happen automatically i All think right. that's the uh, difficult part are you able to tell from your side um because i like i said i think it's i think it's interesting that there are indie curators whose playlist network rival the major playlists. so are are you able to see any trends in like playlist growth like maybe specific things that the curators are doing to grow their playlist that larger hmm. have you noticed anything um, like in terms of like the track selection and like how they, well, maybe not even that more so like growth tactics. Like we, we interviewed a player's curator on here once and he was telling us one of his big strategies was he would change the name of his playlist to a popular album. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah, 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 that's, I mean, that's one thing you can do is like search yeah. engine optimization. So like, yeah. yeah, I've noticed that with, and this is not like the most ethical thing, but like some playlists will literally copy a bigger playlist, like word for word. And so they get the search engine optimization from those, from that, from the association with that bigger legit playlist. So that's like a unethical way 
that some people do it, uh, yeah. which I wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't uh, recommend. Uh, so that's another thing to look out for, though, you know, because you could be looking for New Music Friday and it's not actually New Music Friday. Yeah. It's this other New Music Friday. New okay. Music Friday asterisk. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. What was that? Uh, soundtrack was for Euphoria. Yeah, was it the, that the HBO, HBO show. series was Zendaya. Yeah, um, a really popular show has a really like cult following to it. And uh, there's the official soundtrack on Spotify has like you know x amount of followers. But like the, this other one from like a third party curator that is also titled Euphoria, whatever, whatever, has like at least like was it like two x like followers if not. Yeah, more. yeah, it's like outstripped the actual playlist. Um, that said. So like plagiarism, not cool, but <laughs> there, there are like, you know, strategic keyword things you can do. Um, yeah. You know, if you know like what people are searching for, what they're into, that's part of what being a curator is, is just yeah. knowing what people are into, what their, um, what their tastes are, what they're um, going to be interested in. That's just an extension of what the curator is, really. As long as yeah. it's not plagiarism. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I think it's probably whatever, whatever like uh, engagement tactics a curator does within a DSP is probably fairly limited, I would say. Yeah. Outside of that kind of SEO type stuff. Yeah, yeah. I think probably if anything, what they can do uh, more for themselves as a curator is probably outside of it. Mm. Um, whether it be social media, yeah, definitely um, appearances at like music conferences, you know, putting out you know a free PDF, you know, book about you know dope music and like taste and stuff like that. Like, there's I think every, anything they can do together, or following outside of DSPs themselves, is probably a better use of their time. But yeah, that's definitely not my field of expertise. I know that much. Yeah, uh, but and you know when it comes down to it, knowing good music. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. that's. Yeah. Step one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's the thing is. It's 